killer. So, Boards of Episode 23 came out the other day. By the time we're, we're watching this, it's going to be September 8th on Friday, most likely. And so far, from what I've seen throughout the past couple of days, uh, some people are, seen, are saying stuff about the episode, and it's two different things. A, it's okay. Well, really, three different things. A, it's okay. B, it's amazing. And C, it's not that great. And I'm kind of like in the middle ground and I'm going to go ahead and say that it's okay. You know, there are a lot of bad about this, about this episode and there's a lot of good about the episode too. Some may or may not be cliches or whatever, but overall I, I thought the whole episode by itself was okay. And the whole arc, because this is the final episode of the arc, it was all right. It may be better off for people who haven't uh, read the manga chapters for this arc I would honestly strongly suggest that you go and read the chapters because those may be worth more of your time I haven't had a chance to read them yet and I'm recording this about like 1 30 at night so before I go to sleep I might actually read a couple of pages maybe all of the chapters and so that way I kind of just get a perspective of two different points and what happens in this episode is that the first shot is of everybody and Sasuke Susano and they get to the area of location of where wherever the hell Shin and Sakura are it's kind of just like this random terrain location and it's kind of like whatever of course Sarada the whole time is kind of basically you know doubting Sasuke and how he feels about Sakura and just in general like a Sakura her real mom and shit I'm gonna go ahead and just point out that there are a lot of really interesting shot and scenes of fighting in the animation at times it's pretty good honestly it's not oh it's not bad but it's not great either it's okay but the art style is really kind of where it's like really bad I guess you can say and it's because in the beginning of the first shot when Sasuke and everybody are in his Susano it's literally a still image on top of a still image and they're rotating it sort of and that's basically just really poor art art and animation design and it's pretty bad so uh, like I said the Sakura versus Shin kind of fight scene was uh it was pretty decent. I didn't hate it. It actually looked pretty good. It was, like I said, it was a pretty interesting fighting scene, and there were a lot of really cool fighting moments in general in the episode. There's a scene where Sasuke is just a heartless bastard and is about to kill one of the kids' Shin clones. Just doesn't give a shit. Sarada screams out, No, Dad, don't do it! And then uh, fucking Shin, you know, the, the, the teethless-looking one, the older one with the fucking sharring gun on his head and stabs through the kid to just get a fucking hit on Sasuke and it works uh, Sasuke is about to use his Renegon ability to be able to transport himself with Sakura says it doesn't work but it does and it, it's kind of funny and I thought I thought it was funny um, the Shin clones gather up around the actual Shin and they're basically, you know, set to create a plan to basically dispose of him because uh, apparently he's old, he's useless, whatever, right? So that's kind of it. Of course, Shin is like, no, not yet, yada, yada, yada. There's a really cool scene with Sarada, which pretty much proves that she's not uh, Karen, Karen, Kieran, whatever, however you fucking say her name is not you know her daughter and actually in the episode they basically kind of just give off a, a lazy way of explaining that yeah Katine was basically just the one who helped deliver Sarada and not you know actually give birth to her so 
that's where the misinterpretation came from. That's how they explained it. And I guess it works. But whatever. There was actually a scene where Naruto is about to get stabbed by one of the Shin clones. But he actually stops the blade and grabs it, right? Of one of the Shin clones. And I don't know where the hell, I don't know when the hell Naruto learned this or why he uses it. But I guess he kind of just makes the person that he's, you know, a attacking it with. He basically kind of makes him go into the little, like, world that Kurama is basically in, is sealed up in, uh, into Naruto and basically just scared the shit out of him. And it works because they're all Shin clones. And, and by the end of the episode, you know, everything's, you know, all right. There's a scene where... Chojo when she's in the front gate of the of the leave village she sees Choji but doesn't know it's Choji because she's never seen him skinny before you know Choji touches her on the fucking head just like with Naruto and Sasuke it's like oh you're the fucking dude that did that what that one time and then Ino was there I don't know why I don't know what the hell they were doing uh was like oh Choji she's never seen you in your fucking skinny form and then Chocho's just freaking out. Like, I I didn't know this was, like, some kind of technique you can do. And it's like, okay, cool. So I guess what they decided to do was take all the Shin children clones and basically just kind of put them through, uh, you know, society, I guess. And the thing that kind of, like, irked me, that kind of bothered me a little bit was the fact that the person who's basically kind of just going to help them and rehabilitate them, I guess that's the word I'm going to use, is Kabuto. Kabuto was in the episode. And it didn't really make any sense why he's there helping these kid version clones of Shin Uchiha. Because Kabuto was the reason why all of this shit happened in the Fort Shinobi World War. He was the reason why... 99% of what happened in the Shinobi World War happened. He was the one who cr uh, created all the reanimated Shinobi that were used during the war, for examples. Uh, the dead Kage's most powerful dead Shinobi with Keke Genkai. The seven ninja swordsmen of the mist. Madara. Fucking Madara. And just in general, a whole bunch of other shinobi that had died, you know. Not only that, he basically powered up all of the fucking white Zetsu clones. Like, yeah, they had Hashiyama's fucking cells, I guess, or whatever. I don't really know how to explain it. But basically, it was Kabuto who fucking, you know, powered them up. And not only th <laughs> not only that, he just did a whole bunch of crap. He reanimated Madara, which, you know brought fucking Nobito to do whatever he fucking did, who fucking made Kaguya bring, you know, get back to life, which caused the infinite Tsukuyomi to, the you know, happen, and basically almost killed everybody. And with everything that Kabuto did, you would think he wouldn't even be alive. You would think they would have, like, killed him because of, you know, safety precautions. No, instead they have him helping all these fucking kid child fucking shin clones whatever sure well I'll, I'll i'll definitely let that pass because that's that's fucking cool <laughs> i i don't know i don't know why they kind of just let this happen but it happened they kind of have like this nice moment in the end where it's like sasuke's getting ready to leave and whatever and then they kind of like make Sasuke kind of like go out of his comfort zone and kind of out of character really and he's basically showing emotions that he doesn't really show ever towards Sakura and Sarada especially you know that he really does care for them which ultimately was you know the result of kind of why Sarada kind of did all of this in the first place which is good but I felt like the execution would have could have been a little bit better whatever anyways with all of the bad and with all of the good 
ultimately, I I know why kind of most of the stuff that happened happened, and I get it, which is the reason why I say it's an okay episode. If they kind of had executed it and done it right, and weren't so lazy about it, it could have definitely been a, a whole better episode and a better arc in, in general. But they didn't. They didn't do it like the way that the fans kind of wanted it to happen, which kind of just what made it happen happen. Uh, and ultimately, which that's the main reason why I'm going to go ahead and just read you know the Naruto manga chapters, because if that's going to be executed a lot more efficiently and just overall a lot better of experience in terms of just reading something, then why not? I kind of planned on wanting to read the manga as is anyways. It's just that I don't have any fucking time to read. And to some people who are watching the video and my channel, you, some, some of you may think that's kind of ridiculous. But considering that I'm making videos and now that Destiny 2 came out the other day, you know, all of my time is basically focused on a whole bunch of different things besides sitting down and reading Naruto manga chapters, sadly. But definitely with this arc, considering how it was executed and how it was done, I'm definitely going to go read the manga chapters. I'm going to go just do it and maybe it'll be a better experience. Hopefully it will, because then it'll make me forgive the whole arc, but not entirely. You know, it's still basically going to be you know, that arc that was reanimated for a reason. Just kind of like to fill in something new for a lot of people who didn't read the manga chapters. And then they're going to go jump straight into, you know, the Boruto movie stuff. Which we've already seen. Whatever. It's, it's kind of because of these reasons why I started to go fucking watch or rewatch rather part one. Because part one is so done so much better you know it was taken care of a lot more it was executed a lot more the characters felt like they actually struggled in a lot of places i just got done watching the gara versus, uh, versus rock lee fight and the neji versus naruto fight in the tuning exams that was fucking awesome and then i have to watch this episode w with sasuke you know being able to things that he's being able to do and not executing them like he should have been there was Sakura who, you know, shouldn't have been injured like the way she was, but she got injured. And then there's Naruto being Naruto, being as powerful as he is as the Hokage, and, you know, he's being soft and gentle with these, you know, murderous children when they really don't need to be alive. And this is one of the few times where I actually grew with Sasuke, and it's like, why are you being soft? Why are you letting him live? Wh whatever. That's the end of the episode. That's the end of this review. And let me know your opinions on the episode in, in the comments. Because I'm actually pretty interested. Anyways. That's the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, be sure to drop a like. If you're brand new to the channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button for future content. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Hope you guys have a fantastic day. Peace out.